Glad to be coming in uh, live on the air tonight on Facebook Live and streaming to everyone. Just want to remind everybody that we got an awesome, awesome service coming up this Sunday morning at 9 a.m. at at 14172 Avon Avenue in the beautiful city of Lathrop, California. So if you're coming from I-5 or the crosstown freeways of either one, you get on I-5, take the uh, is it Lathrop Road exit? Lathrop Road. Lathrop Road, Road exit. Mm -hmm. Go to Avon Avenue or uh, go to Eagle's Nest Harley Davidson and follow, go two streets behind Eagle's Nest Harley Davidson and you'll find the church right there on Avon Avenue at 9 a.m. Not 10, but 9 a.m. We're going to be there at 9 a.m. having a wonderful time. God is going to be doing some, some miraculous things. I believe that we're in a season of miracles. And uh, I believe that if we will follow the Lord and, and become uh, unwavering in our faith, that we're going to see the miraculous begin to unfold in our lives. I also believe that we are in a time when we need to uh, begin to experience family revival. That yes. it's time for us to begin to draw our families to the Lord. Right. If, if, if you don't think time is short, it's a whole lot shorter than it was yesterday. Oh, yes. yes. Or last year. So time is shorter than it has been. Uh, the Lord could return at any time. Look at what is going on in the world. We have r wars and rumors of wars. We have earthquakes, famines, plagues, pestilence. We have uh, governments that are trying to uh, take over countries and rule uh, with, with a, a, a dictatorship. Um, we see that in Venezuela, Colombia. We see that all over. We see yes, it all over. All over. Uh, we see China is preparing uh, for who knows what, and we need to begin. Come on, that's the the yeah. dragon, right? Come on, we need to begin to think about some of the things that are going on in our lives. And I can tell you that it's all in the Word of God. That if you will begin to get into the Word of God and that's apply right. the Word of God to your life, it will begin to make such a difference in how you view the world how you see the world. You know, we are the children of the Most High God. We are called and anointed and appointed for this time. I used to think when I was young, man, I wish I was born in the cowboy days, but I was born exactly when God wanted me to be born. I was thinking, you know, I was thinking the other day how, you know, we, we I'm 60 years old. I've seen so much take place. And I know those that are, are older than I, uh, they see they can see how so much has taken place we've seen the unfolding of so much in our lives times and we need to begin to realize that we have to pass those things on right knowledge wise we don't know when the lord is coming back it could be tonight while you're sleeping and i don't know about you but i don't want to go into eternity without my loved ones i want them to be right there with me and i'm i i don't want to just give them fire insurance Right. But I want to lead them to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And, you know, God's really been dealing with me about us finding our instructions in the Word. All hell is breaking loose, man, all around us. We see all hell yes. breaking loose. It almost seems like our own government is against us as conservatives and Christians. And, uh, you know, it, it well, actually, I believe they are. They were against Jesus, and I believe that they're against us now. But... You know, we find that in the Word of God, there is a, a path for us. There is direction for us. There is instruction for us. There is correction for us in the Word of God. And if we will begin to, uh, we're panning a little bit here, but if we will begin to just get into the Word of God right. to seek our direction, amen? Amen. And, and, th and this is a real motivational word tonight. It's real motivational. The Word of God is motivational. Yes, I is. used to get upset because preachers were calling themselves motivational speakers. I kind of still do. We ought to just say we're preachers preaching a motivational message. There Amen. Yeah. Uh, but the Word of God mm -hmm. is very motivational. And it, will, it is, it is the, the logistics for living this life right now. So God began to deal with me. And I was, I was just talking to Pastor Beth about this today. In fact, I, know, I noticed she has some notes on the same thing over there. But let me read some scripture to you out of the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 1. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. 
for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tablets of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good under and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, are you listening? In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Think about that. He shall direct thy path. Now, I don't know about you, but that's what I want. I want the Lord to direct my, my path. So, 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 you know, and, and I'm always saying, I don't know about you because I don't always know what is going on in everyone's life. But, and, and, but, but in my life, there are so many and so much information, or should I say misinformation that's coming at me right. in all directions day and night. Even good, even people with good intentions and well-meaning people coming at me with this information and that information and don't do this and don't take that and don't have this and don't go there and right. don't, or do this and do this. This works, that works, that works, right. this works. But so, so tonight I want to speak to you about direction and guidance, where we're getting our direction and guidance and how we're receiving our direction and guidance. See, anyone listening to me uh, tonight, ha have you ever been physically lost? I've been physically lost and I have a really good keen sense of direction, but I've been physically lost and it is freaky. Yes. I've been in the mountains where I've kind of lost my sense of direction and it just got freaky. And, and getting lost is, is a trip because it causes an immediate response, whether uh, it's confusion, sometimes panic, other times anger. I remember when I got up, uh, got lost, I got upset like, what is wrong with me? I'm just like, man, how can I lose my bearings like this? And, I, and I'm seriously speaking about being lost, not just taking a wrong turn. Right. Being lost, like, like out in the woods lost, right? Yeah. Like out in the woods lost. I have, like I said, I have this really good sense of direction, yet I've been lost before. So it doesn't matter how skilled you think you are, doesn't matter how in tune you think you are there are times when there are things that can lead you astray and you can get lost it ain't no fun being lost you can get lost you can get lost in life yeah amen yeah you can be going in the wrong direction and that's being lost especially if you think you're going in the right direction this world and 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 it's false or it's it's god little g satan himself they love to do all that they can do to confuse and mislead God's children. He's the author of confusion. You understand? Oh, yes. God is not the author of confusion. Satan is the author of confusion, and he does everything he can. He uses the media. He uses literature, propaganda, education. He uses infomercials. He uses everything he can to mislead God's people. He uses government. He uses anything that's not being led by the Lord is being led astray. Right. Amen. Amen. There's one way. There's one door. Jesus is the way. All right. Yes. He is the door. There is one way that leads to God. There's one way into the kingdom of God. Amen. There's one way into the kingdom of heaven. And anyone that tries to get in any other way is a thief and a, a robber and will by no means enter in. So you have to follow the instructions laid down in God's word. Now, you know, maybe during your day-to-day -day life, you're working your job and, you know, you're, you're doing things that aren't really, uh, you know, that you don't need the, the word of God, so to speak, to operate the machinery, but you need the word of God directing your life as you're living it. And that includes your job. That includes yes. everything. Yes. The Bible says, work as though you work unto the Lord. Amen. So God's word is our compass for our life's direction. It's our compass. And, th and that's why we must get it in our hearts, in our spirit, down, down in our heart and mind. Because God is giving us, he has given us his spiritual compass. You understand? It's our spiritual compass. It's, it's, the, it's not only just the moral law. But it's direction. 
right. for life. Amen. And that's why we need to, we need continued exposure to the word of God so that we don't get lost in all the, the, the distractions of this world. And there are so many, and we are so easily distracted. I mean, we just get so easily distracted. The enemy comes with doubt, fear, insecurity, yes. right? Bitterness, anger, resentment, trouble, hard time, sickness, disease, poverty, pain, loss of jobs, gain of job. I mean, sometimes we get something and it distracts us or we give some, or we get, we lose something and it distracts us. Some people get distracted by what they call blessings. God bless me with this and God bless me with that. But yet they're so distracted by it that they miss out on exactly God, what God was trying to do. Right. So the truth is, what good does it do to have the truth and not live it? Wow. Right? That's I say good. all the time, yes. what good does it do to have favor and not use it? Right. Right? I mean, if, if, if your cousin owns a body shop, take your car to the body shop where your cousin is and get him to give you a discount. Right? Amen. I mean, you know somebody. I mean, what good does it do to have favor or to claim favor? and never use it. What good does it do to have a map, the logistics for life, the instructions for life and not use them? Many Christians neglect the word and they end up lost. Are you hearing me? They end up lost. And, and you can tell they're lost. It's not, be, it's not that they're not saved. You can tell they're lost because they are not uh, productive in their walk with God. They are not, uh, prof, they are not prospering in their walk with God, uh, they are not uh, bearing fruit right. in their walk with God. Amen. Amen. They are not showing commitment, and they become they are, they are not teachable. They are not usable. Right? They are, they they are they are not trainable because they're not following the instructions. Right. And when right. you don't follow the instructions, that makes you unusable. Wow. Many Christians neglect the word, so so they end up leaning to their own understanding. They begin to lean to their own understanding in life, which is usually all messed up because of our past, because of the way we've uh, been exposed, what we've been exposed to. I mean, you know, uh, from, from illicit sexual behavior to uh, everything else, right? right? To material uh, greed and lust to, uh, you know, people have confusion about prosperity. When, you're, when your mind's not focused on the things of God, prosperity is all about money, 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 right? right? And, and material, material, material. But prosperity is about the heart. It's a frame of heart. It's a frame of heart that you, you grab. So in this life, we'll have trouble. And many of those troubles come to turn us around. You understand? Yes. They come because once we begin to... It's like, it's like you're in the woods, you're lost, but all of a sudden... You get your compass out and you begin to follow your compass. Yeah. And you're following your compass, but your compass leads you to a canyon. Amen? Yeah. And then you got to climb the wall to get to the other side. And that's why the Bible says to say to this mountain, be thou removed. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to climb it to remove it right. or to get it behind you. It's just saying that when you're using the word for your instruction and, more, and for your, your, your reproof and your correction and for your right. compass yes. in life, it'll give you moral guidance. It'll give you the spiritual guidance you need. It, uh, the word of God will give you the, 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 the guidance for life itself in the directions to take what you should do. Should I go there? Should I shouldn't go there? Should I not go there? Should I, should I give this? Should I not give this? Should I receive this or should I not receive this? We right. need God's instruction. We need it. Yes. Right? So, so in this life, when trouble comes, many of those troubles come, and the enemy plans on those troubles coming to turn us back or to stop us, to, 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 turn, to, get us, to turn to the right or to the left when the Lord wants us to go straight. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a path unto my way. Right? Right. We're to follow the, the lamp and, and, the, and the path that the word is telling us to follow. God's word will will point us in the right direction, but we have to have God's word. It's the only true path for all Christians. It's not just for some Christians. It's not for religion. It's not just for, you know, preaching out of on Sundays. It is the path for our life. It is the word of God, the instructions of God. 
biblical instruction before leaving earth. Bible. Right. Right? Amen. Right? So the problem that many of us face today cause the, 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 the troubles we face cause us to look for the easy way. Right? The Bible usually don't tell us the easy way, man. Mm -mm. Almost every person I know who is a, a thriving as a Christian, those who are successful in their walk with God and in life as a Christian, every one of them have stood at the crossroads of life and they chose God's road rather than the easy road. Right. They, they chose the narrow way, not the broad way. The Bible says that the... the, the that straight is the way that leadeth to righteousness, yes. but broad is the way right. Right? Yes. that leads to destruction. We have to follow the narrow way. Right. And the Word of God is the compass for life. It's where we get our moral standing. It's where we find our principles and what we believe in and what we believe. This is how I can't understand how th so many Christians we're voting in this last vote for things that were contrary to biblical principles. Right. Even right. if we don't like a person or like that person. Right. There, there are men all through the Bible. Right. That, that weren't necessarily liked or likable that God used for seasons. Yes. To turn the tide for his children. So shame on some of you that voted contrary yes. and sh just shame on you, shame on you because right. you're going to reap a harvest, man. And yes. you think it's, you think, oh yeah, the, the, the world's going to turn for the good. Now it's only a hundred and something days into it. Israel and Palestine, the peace treaty has been broken. There's a, they're, they're going to right. war. Russia just met with Turkey about going to war against Israel and teaming up with Palestine today. All right. Gas shortages, pipeline shutdowns. The economy is taking a dump. Lumber is at an all-time high. The, the housing market is probably going to get ready to crash. For those of you that just bought a $800,000 house, probably be worth $200,000 in a week. So you need to understand that things are getting ready to shift. And that's why we need to keep our eyes on oh, the Lord. That's, right. that's why we need to walk the path of, 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 of righteousness. That's why we need the word. Amen. Yes. If, we would have, if Christians would have been using the word, they'd have been getting the word out. Yes. Amen. Amen. Every one of them have stood. Every Christian stands at the crossroads. I want to read something to you out of Jeremiah real quick. I want to read something to you. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient path where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. I set watchmen over you saying, pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. God has set watchmen over us, preachers and evangelists and pastors and teachers right. and prophets and apostles, watchmen over us to, to give us direction from this word right here. As well as we must find direction yes. in this word ourselves. We can't just write it off. Right? We have to stand, we stand at the crossroads. Many of us today, many people, I should say, not myself, I'm not at the crossroads. I've made a decision. But many people are at the crossroads. And the Bible says that the, that in Jeremiah here, that the ancients, the ancient paths have, have put their footsteps out there. So we can, if we follow the ancient paths, we follow the right way. You see, people, this scripture is making reference to the saints of the past. Uh, the saints from the past in, in God's word have left us some pr footprints to follow. Yes. They've left, left us some pr footprints to follow so we won't be lost. Right. We must choose his way, right? Not, not the wrong way. Look for the good way. Jeremiah 6 tells us, look for the good way. God's way will always be the good way. Right. The right way. And we need to understand that amidst all the garbage bombarding our minds and lives and ears and eyes, we must choose God's way. Come hell or high water, wow. we have to choose God's way. Amen. You understand? Yes. We have to. Yes. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. The fact is, is that sometimes it can be extremely difficult and challenging to make the right choice. But we have to do it based upon eternity, based upon truth not based upon that situation. 
Lean not to your own understanding, That's right. but acknowledge God. Yes. You got something, Pastor Beth? Yes, I do. Um, I was reading a quote today, and this was by uh, Vernon Greeson, but I love this quote. It says, I was, it, if you're going to believe in everything you read, then start with your Bible. Amen? Because this is the most, if you read Hebrew 4.12, it says, for the word of God is living and powerful. Yeah. And sharper than any two-edged Amen. sword. Are you hearing me? Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow of its discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. It goes all the way down into the intent. You know, and if you if you really open up your word and if you really pray, you know, 30, uh, Psalm 32, 8 says, He said, I will instruct you and teach you and I will guide you with my eye. And I was thinking about this, how, um, how the Lord is, how good he is, and how this world is so crazy, and, and the worldly gains of this world is not worth it. And I was thinking back when I was reading about Exodus 32, about how the children of Israel had begun to build some gold idols, oh, yeah. because they went off their path. And they, and, and you know, Moses was up there on the mountain talking to God. And they couldn't even wait for Moses to come on down. And they were so busy building their gold tab. But see, they got, uh, they got distracted. Right. They got bored. Yep. They got to where their, their eyes were on the worldly come things on. in this world today. It's so true. And us Christians get our eyes off God easy. And I just kept hearing the Lord say, you have to fix your eyes on me. Wow. You cannot be Fix like the children the of Lord. Israel because they wandered for 40 years because their eyes weren't on God. Their path was off. We got to get back on the right path. Man, that's powerful. We got to learn to listen to the Lord. We got to hear what he's saying. And listen, I wouldn't move until God gave me the answer. And that's the problem. We're moving without getting the answer. That's right. So let's, let's get back on the path. <clears throat> and that yes, this is a crazy world, but we can lean on the Lord like Pastor was That's saying. That's right. Lean and on the Lord. And most of all, trust Him all the way. All the way. And and don't and listen. Your own understandings will fail you every day, but Him, when He directs you, He directs you the way that you need to go. And I don't want to be like the children of Israel, Pastor. I don't want to wander because I get bored or I'm distracted or I'm listening to people. We got to learn to open our ears to the word of God. Right. That's Amen? exactly right. That's so right. that's what God was sharing with me is that we can easily get distracted. You know, we can miss a Sunday here or there. or We can not, you know, watch us on live on Thursday because we're, you know, we're busy or we have to work. But we have to have the word of God. Amen. Like Pastor was saying, we got, that's, a, that's what gives us life. It's life. That's and right. that's what gets us motivated. And that's what gets us focused. And we've got to get focused and you and pray for the world, but don't get wrapped up in the world because I don't want you'll get distracted, you'll get upset. That's right. But get back on track and let God direct you where you need to go. It's Amen? time to get back on track. Yes. It is time. Many of us have been off track. We've gone through this this pandemic, whether yes. whatever it is, we've gone through it. Yeah. Uh, this season. Uh, I believe that this season should have been used by Christians to grow closer to the Lord, to grow stronger in the Lord, which I've seen so many that have. Right. So many of us have grown uh, and advanced in the kingdom, and the kingdom of God has advanced. Now it's time for us to begin to march forward and take back what has been taken from us, to stand strong and fight for what is right. Yeah. Listen, God wants to pour into you. But he cannot pour into you if you're not a, a, a willing vessel. Right. Amen? Amen. So you're at the crossroads tonight. Choose. Make a choice. My life from this point forward is not going to be directed by my own understanding. My, my life is going to be directed by the Word of God. Yes. My life's compass is going to be the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to do what God says I can do. I'm going to have what God says I can have. Amen. I'm going to go where God says I can go. And I'm going to be what God says I can be. And I'm going to stand on that right there. Amen. Amen. Listen, guys, we love you. We believe in you. God believes in you. This is a, a season where we are going to come through it victorious. Don't get down. 
but get up in Jesus' name. And listen, show up Sunday morning and bring somebody with you. We're going to have the most wonderful, awesome time in the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord God Almighty. We're going to pour out our hearts at the altar. We're going to pour out the word into your lives. So it's at 14172 Avon Avenue in Lathrop, California. That's 14172 Avon Avenue in Lathrop, California at 9 a.m. Prayer Valley Family Worship Church. There's a name full. There's a mouthful. Prayer Valley Family Worship Church. And listen, guys, we will see you here, there, or in the air. I love you. Be love blessed. You. Amen.